welcome to my house and my studio. I am uh, Judy Cleghorn. We're living in beautiful Heron, and I'm so happy that you're here. The studio has been moved out to the garden because first of all, it's beautiful. Second, it's a great place to paint. And third, I have a foot injury from falling off my bike. I have lived on the Key Peninsula in this house for 45 years. And these days, that's kind of extraordinary. Originally, I'm from Seattle. My background is not in art. I was a philosophy major, political science, foreign languages. I studied in Germany, went to school in California and University of Washington and some other degrees here and there. Then I went into education and I was a teacher for a long time, um, 17 years. Uh, middle elementary and middle school and then I was a school administrator. When I retired I had a chance to start doing art. I had never studied art at all. I had some really good teachers along the way, Bev Peterson, so shout outs to my fabulous early teachers and I'm so not done with them yet. Robin Peterson was another teacher. Um, then um, I went with, um, at the Y, they offered classes, and that, that was starting in about 2000, um, maybe 16. So really, I've only been solidly painting for maybe four years. I'm a real dilettante. I can't seem to settle. So I started with um, acrylics, as many people do, and I enjoyed that. That was a good exploration. And I did some really nice paintings in acrylics. Then I moved to watercolor and explored that for a long time. And um, I love watercolor, it was great. I saw a demonstration by Melissa Weinman, who is a Tacoma artist and renowned and really fabulous, realistic artist, but also very spiritual. So I've studied with her. I went to Italy with her on a painting trip, uh, which was amazing. We used to travel a lot before COVID and take a lot of inspiration from my travels. I love um, all the, the passion and color that you get in being in other cultures, and some of that is reflected in my work. I recently have fallen head over heels with pastels. So ch soft chalk pastels. Lately, I've rediscovered watercolors because of my injury, and I love doing plein air with a group of plein air painters here. So watercolors are portable, and that's where I am. These are some of my pastels. This scene is taken at Helen's house down on the beach, a little bit um, south of the ferry dock, and it's called Sunset at Helen's. The thing about pastels is it's such bold, vibrant color. I'll show you. These are, this is a set of Terry Ludwig's um, ex Intense Darks. And this is, um, uh, this is Blue Earth Pastels, uh, the Nomad Collection. So this is, you know, if I can only just take a little bit with me out in the field, I'll just take these. This is when I started here in the garden, and it's it needs more work. Always do a value study. Figure out where your darkest darks are going to be, your lightest lights, and then your your a couple of medium range values, and also work on your composition. If you do these things before you start, then the painting almost paints itself because you're not trying to solve those problems when you're actually on the, the, on the board that you're using. Over there I have a giant um, uh, iron statue of a huge bug. It's, it's not exactly a mosquito. It would be the worst mosquito of your life. But it's kind of, and then these, I had these beautiful purple allium that were blooming behind it. So I love the contrast of the rusty metal with all that luscious, um, and he's very angular, and then all the luscious sort of roundness and blousiness of the alliums, and you know, the straight lines and the curved lines. I did this working with Melissa Weinman. It's a scene on the Green River, and this is in oil. It was all done with a palette knife, every single stroke. 
And um, I, I actually really love this painting. Here's the reference photo on this one. Trying to, this, again, working with Melissa, trying to capture the translucence where the light comes through the fruit. How do you capture that beautiful um, translucence and transmission of the light? So I feel like this was my first try. I felt like it was really good, or maybe my second try. Also with Melissa, this was practicing directional strokes with the chicken. So I think he's pretty darn cute. And I like, I really like this part with the light reflecting. This is another soft chalk pastel. Um, I did this from a photograph I took down at Glen Cove. And since you're all local people, you know where Glen Cove is. And um, it's just a beautiful scene. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Now, I want to tell you also, I took great liberties with the color because it was a gray day and it was all gray. So, you know, you're the boss of the painting. If you want to put color in or you want to put fun clouds or a pink sky, if you get to do whatever you want. If you want to move a mountain or a tree or put in a duck, go for it. This statue is a Venus de Milo. This was really a COVID kind of thing. I thought, you know, with COVID, everything is so unsure. And so I thought, well, Marty Reese, who's a local sculptor at Nwana, very prominent and fabulous teacher as well as sculptor, she said she offered this class and I thought, I don't know how to do figure drawing. I don't know how to do sculpture. I've never worked with clay, why not? So um, she gave us a series of photographs. We can see everything is to scale to help us. And that was really, really fun. Um, you know, it's, I, I like her. She's uh, very voluptuous. <laughs> I am passionate about tulips. And this is, um, again, this is a photograph that I took, tulips that I raised myself that are um, one purple and one bright orange. Now, for a value study, this was interesting. I just took this photograph and changed it on my phone to black and white. Then I printed that on just copy paper, and I went over the darks that I wanted with a black marker. So that again, you know, it's like, where am I gonna put my darks? And then this, this little thing, also very useful is to test out the colors. This was actually one of the early ones, again, tulips, and nice and loose and bright, could be refined, I don't know, but it was a start and there's a lot about this I like. This is um, Venezia, beautiful Venice. Uh, my friend um, in Gig Harbor, she and her husband were traveling in Venice and they took this photograph, posted it online. I said, may I paint that? They said, of course. So I'm really happy with this one. I think it's quite dreamy and Venice is quite dreamy. So that all works out. When we were in Italy, we went to a beautiful garden that was a sculpture garden. And they, these were bigger than life terracotta figures. And I liked that they were, they were fleshy women. And they were women in all their imperfections. We have dear friends in Austria. We go there as often as we can. And we hike and ski and snowshoe and ride bikes and eat and drink. <laughs> in, in summer, it, it doesn't turn brown like it does here. There's a lot of moisture in the ground and um, different theories as to why but it just this is actually what the green looks like it is it is almost fluorescent green so and then these beautiful when you hike you always hike up to a hut so sonen hutta and up there you have wonderful homemade food and a beer or a glass of wine or a cup of coffee and it's just total delight when i did of mount rainier and this is oil. Um, who isn't just smitten with Mount Rainier? When you see it in that evening light or the morning light, there's something about that beautiful light that's pink and coral and... Anyway, so I tried to see, I, I wonder if I could paint that. Well, I think it turned out pretty well. 
um, magical mountain, and she's all ours. In, in progress, this was Plain Air Group in Gig Harbor. We were at the old ferry dock, and this is looking towards an old net shed. Um, so I got a good start. The, the light changed, of course, as light does. The tide changed, so the shadows changed, everything changed. But um, I really like what I have so far. I think it's going to be a beautiful painting. And this is done at, uh, down at uh, the Lake Bay Marina. And my son and I were down there the other day with the plein air group, and we went around the corner and we were painting. We actually know the people, Sowers, who own this spit. So we were, <laughs> this was funny because we were both painting the same scene. And Max is considerably more experienced at painting than I am, but we both came up with a darn good painting. And um, the thing I love about watercolors, you can go back and add layers. So even though this is pretty vibrant, I'm going to go back and do more. This is um, a painting. It is actually dye on, Procyon dye on silk. And I did this in 2011. So it was actually one of my first paintings that I did with Bev Peterson. I love fabrics. I always have. So painting on silk was fabulous. I'm really thrilled with how this turned out. And then I added little gold sparkles. So I call it gypsy vines. Uh, this is a recent oil painting that I did called Pasture. And we have pasture right out in front of our house that slopes down and stops before the water. And the clouds and the shadows were extremely beautiful that day. So I thought I would try and capture that in paint. One thing I really want to share is that I think it's great that I started doing art uh, at a late time in my life. I want you to feel like you can just start. You don't have to have a big formal education. And it really is about uh, creativity. And the, the biggest obstacle is, with almost everyone I know, is overcoming fear. So uh, it's important to get in the mindset that it's just paper or canvas and paint. It is not precious. And you're in a constant mode of experimentation and pushing the boundaries of what you think you can do. And it's like, well, what if I did this? I don't know. Let's find out. So you're constantly modifying and experimenting and pushing forward into new new media, new compositions, new, new formats, new, uh, just, just experimenting. I really embrace the French notion that art is life and life is art. So I want beauty in every aspect of my life, not just on the canvas.